guys, real talk. I just arrived to the horseshoe in Paris and like there was there is two cash game rooms here. One is from the World Series of Poker and the other belongs to Horseshoe. And man, I have two friends that I spoke already that are playing cash game and both of them were in the horseshoe section saying that the game there was better. And then I saw their table, they were playing one three. I saw their table and man, it was clearly that their table was soft and i just got here i'm gonna show a video that i made that shows the people the players that are, were playing cash game and it was they were looking better like they were looking like they were more solid players here than there the table there is more beautiful it's like the table is green with the road series and etc okay but then i have two options i can play the game that I feel like it's not the best choice, but the table is more beautiful. Or I can play the game that I feel like it's the best choice. And I believe I should play the game that I feel is the best choice. So let me know your opinion if you think I chose right. And yeah, let's go. The list was huge at the horseshoe cash game section. So I put my name in the 1, 3, 2, 5 and 5, 10 list. I got called for a 1, 3 and that's where I sat down. A really kind gentleman named Michael said he supports the vlog. We even took a picture together. But soon enough, the floor came to me and said I could not record there. So right away, I decided to stand up and go to the official World Series of Poker Cash Game section. And the first hand in my next table, not the second, not the third, the first hand, I see pocket aces on the cutoff, under the gun raises to 15, low jack and middle position just flat call, which is already a great sign. They were not supposed to do that, especially with me in their left, because it incentivizes me to 3-bet in position. 75. 75. I'm gonna 3-bet here with a bunch of hands that are weaker than aces, but I just felt like my 3-bet now would sound so bluffy that I decided to make a 75, which is a pretty big sizing to make it right now with aces in position. Under the gun, quickly 4 bets to 225. Both players in my right fold, Action is back on me, and here if I 5 bet in position, I just think I'm gonna put him in a really really tough spot, one which he will fold all of his bluffs, and he will also fold many of his value hands. So instead of 5 betting, I decided to call in position and see a flop. Flop comes king, 10, 5 rainbow, now I'm losing mostly to kings and 10s that he has in his range. There are also two combinations of king 10 suited, but I'm gonna be winning here a majority of the times. He C bets a quarter of the pot for 110, and here my thought process is similar than before. If I raise here, I'm gonna put a lot of pressure in his value hands, and I'm also gonna make his bluffs to just fold. So I decided to call in position again. Turn comes a relatively safe one, an 8 of clubs. Now he bets 225. I got 665 left in my stack, and shoving passes through my head right now. But, I still believe he has many bluffs in his range, and if I shove here, he's gonna fold all of it. He can also find foes like King Queen, King Jack. So even though I don't feel so comfortable anymore of calling in position, because there is a flush draw in the board now, he could even have some gut shots or like some outs for hitting two pair or trips. But, we're here to do the best decision, and I believe that the time that the best decision was calling again, and that's what I did, I called. And unfortunately, the river came at 3 of clubs, now flush gets there. I got 440 left in my stack and I'm just committed to this spot that has like 3 times more than my stack has. He tanks for a bit and then shoves all in. I snap call, he says he has the nuts, but then he shows ace jack with the jack of clubs. So he has nothing. I show the aces and we win a pretty juicy $2037 pot in the first hand we played in this room. The table dynamic was the following. The three players in my right seemed to be bad. They were playing really passive. They were not 3-betting so often. And that's gonna incentivize me to 3-bet more often and play aggressive in position versus them. But the players in my left were the opposite. They were aggressive and they seemed to be playing solid poker. So I should be careful with what I should choose to play here because my left were filled with players that would 3-bet me often and that if I open raise a hand that is gonna fold for a 3-bet, I better think twice before open raising this hand. But in about 10 minutes in this game, the guy in my right just lost all his chips, and the table was not that good. 
So I saw a story from Frankie that was saying that his table was amazing and there was a seat in his table. So I moved to his table to check it out if it was really good. <laughs> Seemed like the guy that was splashing tips around already lost all of it and he left the table. So the table was not that fishy. In the first hand in this table I see pocket 8s from the under the gun. I open raise to 20. Only big blind calls and we go heads up to a flop that comes king 10 6 rainbow. I check and he checks back. Turn is a jack of diamonds. This board is bad for my hand but pretty great for my range. So I wanna bet here. But if I bet here I'm pretty much transforming my hand into a bluff. So I wanna force hands like 10x, jack x, king x even to fold. So I decide to bet $90 which is 200% of the pot. I could see he got anxious about it but quickly called. River is a complete blank, a deuce of hearts, and now I believe this river is not good enough to shove. I end up checking and he checks back. He shows queen jack offsuit and wins the hand. Next hand I see pocket queen is on the button. It falls to me and I open raise to 15. Only big blank calls. And we go heads up to a flop that comes king six deuce with two hearts. I have no heart in my hand. He checks to me and I see bet 15 and he calls. Turns a 10 of clubs. He checks to me again and I don't see myself trying to extract 3 streets here with queens. So I decide to check back and maybe open space for him to bluff. River is a jack and he checks to me. I think I'm winning here and I'm gonna bet for value. The question is how much. I decided to make it a bluffy sizing of 85% of the pot, $50. He goes into the tank for like 30 seconds and in the end decides to call. I show my hand and it's good. Next hand was one of the most interesting hands in this session, but first I got a very special announcement to make. If you want to become a better poker player, you need to download my ebook, The Profitable Poker Player, Six Principles for Success in Poker, that is available in the first link of the description of this video. I really wrote this ebook with a lot of care about you and to really add value to your life. Now I wanna talk about a skill that is very useful to improve at any activity you wanna become good in your life, the modeling skill. If you're like me and you rather listen to it instead of reading it, there is also the audiobook version available in the description. All you gotta do to have access to my ebook is click the first link in the description and follow the instructions to join. Now coming back to poker, I see pocket threes on the button, one limper, low jack raises to 35 and high jack calls. That's a great spot to call with pocket threes and playing position. So that's what I do. I call 35 and everybody else folds. Flop comes 5-5-8 five, five, with 2 spades and I have the 3 of spades. They both check to me and here I believe many times I'm gonna be winning with pocket 3s. But there are many hands that have 6 outs versus me. So I decide to bet $40 to protect my equity. Which is 1 third of the pot. The guy on the other side of the table quickly check raises to 125. That's not a great spot to be in. But my read at the time is that he could be doing that with 2 overs like ace-king, ace-queen. And if I call and no ace, no king, no queen comes, we're playing pretty deep and let's see what he does, you know? Because I don't see him having so many fives or eights. He's basically saying that he has an over pair. So because I thought I would be winning sometimes here and I believe overall calling in position is the best play here. And even though I don't love it, that's what I'm gonna do. So I call and the turn comes an eight of clubs. He quickly checks to me. And now I have definitely one of the worst combos I could have here and I can only win if I bluff. Effective stack is $1200 and if I bet here I want to put pressure and I want to represent that I have an 8. So if you decided to bet here, how much would you bet? Let me know your opinion in the comment section. The amount I decided to do is 250, around 80% of the pot. Low jack quickly folds and we win this one. Next hand I see ace queen suited from the low jack. Button straddles to 10 and I open raise to $30. High jack, quickly 3 bets to $100. Effective stack is deep like 2000. And this guy is the same guy from the last hand. He changed positions to my left. And he was a pretty aggressive player. As you can see on GTO Wizard, in this spot you can either do raising, calling or folding. GTO would 4 bet 15% of the times, would call 52% of the times and would fold 33% of the times. What I tend to do here is versus each player I'm gonna try to do what I believe is the best option versus that particular player. And versus this guy who was an aggressive player, I believe the best option was 4 betting. So that's what I did. I 4 bet to $300.
Ask them. What the heck? Why, why'd you four bet? Just call. A fun fact about this hand is that this guy knew me since the start that we played and he didn't told me. He just came to my left to play versus me and didn't even told me that he watches my videos and etc. And honestly, I really feel that's kind of unfair. And besides that, I love to talk to you. So if you find me somewhere, just let me know you watch my content, you know, instead of playing versus me, knowing a bunch of things about me while I don't know nothing about you. I was invited to hang out at Resorts World with some friends. So I decided I was done for today, winning 854 in 3 hours and 30 minutes. What flop is that? With you, with you. What flop is that, first hand? Man, you, you're such a nice guy, I, I'm, I'm sad it's versus you, but everybody here is nice. So, but Jeremy is not as nice as you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Jeremy is a fucking nice guy. No, bro, he's too nice, bro. <laughs> well, guys, I feel like what I mentioned yesterday is most likely confirmed, and the World Series of Poker Cash Game at Paris is most likely the toughest cash game around. I played in like five tables over the last two days and I really feel like the average of the tables I got is tougher than the average table I'm gonna get at the win, for example. That is, by the way, a game that you can buy even, even deeper because here you can buy in for a thousand and at the win you can buy in for 1500. And if you're thinking about profit, I really think like here is not the best choice and I won today. I won today and I won yesterday. I'm more than $1,000 up in this game but I really feel like overall the average is higher here than anywhere else in Vegas right now. And here's the thing, the World Series of Poker Cash Game is great. The rake structure is good, the games are beatable, and even though I'm staying at the horseshoe, so in terms of location, this is the best spot for me to play, I really feel like the 2-5 field here is tougher than the average. Also, the lines are always big, so the game I'm liking the most to play cash games is Resorts World Poker Room, they are great, great staff, great games, way less lines, their food is great, I feel like I could live in this casino for a month, they just got everything here. That's where I was invited to go with my fellow new friends, vloggers as well. We played a 1-3 session for more than an hour, but our purpose was more to hang out. We went to a karaoke and the challenge was to go to the stage and sing, and I decided to go for it. At least it's gonna be an experience, and this is what you're gonna see is me singing American Idiot in the karaoke. Hope you enjoyed this episode, if you did, there are hundreds of others that you also enjoy as well, just click any of the options in the screen, the mission of this channel is helping you become a better poker player and see you next time.